call the meeting of the Finance Committee to order at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, August 16th, 2017. Would the clerk be so kind as to call the roll? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Cookson. Present. Alderman Wilshire. Here. Alderman O'Brien. Present. Alderman Clemens. Here. Alderman Karen. Here. Alderman Siegel, I am present, and the mayor is not in attendance today. All right, we'll begin with public comment. Seeing no members of the public are present, we will move on to communications. I would move to accept and place a on file a communication that was accepted after the agenda was prepared by Director Cummings, economic, uh, Director of Economic Development, withdrawing the expenditure request for downtown Nashua holiday lights and decorations. Discussion? Alderman Siegel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do we have to make a motion to suspend the rules first? I, we can suspend oh. the rules, certainly. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to s suspend the rules such that uh, we can accept the communication received after the agenda was prepared. Very good. The uh, motion is to s suspend the rules. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Back to your motion. Back to my motion of accepting and placing on file the communication from Director Cummings uh, with regard to withdrawing the expenditure request for downtown Nashua holiday lights and decorations. Discussion? Basically what has happened is that the Downtown Improvement Committee has reduced the purchase by one lighting fixture, um, reducing the cost by about $3,000. Um, the threshold to come before finance is $10,000. With that reduction in price, um, it no longer meets that threshold. So that's why it, I don't believe that it needs to come before this committee. All right. So that was a short explanation of the communication. The motion is to accept and place on file. Any additional discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. And that uh, communication has been accepted and placed on file. Unfinished business. There is none. New business resolutions. R17120, relative to an agreement for council services concerning potential opioid litigation. Is there a motion? Alderman Siegel. I'd like to make a motion to table until the next regularly scheduled finance meeting on September 6, 2017. The motion by Alderman Siegel is to uh, table until the next regularly scheduled finance meeting on September 6th. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. And that motion is tabled. New business resolutions. There is none. Tabled in committee. Um, Alderman Siegel. I'd like to make a motion to take from the table a contract award for roadside and trail mowing. Thank you. The motion by Alderman Siegel is to take from the table the contract award for roadside and trail mowing. Um, all those in favor say, or discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. And uh, that is taken from the table, that communication. Alderman Siegel. Thank you. Uh, Communication from Dan Cook and Purchasing Manager regarding contract award for roadside and trail mowing, value not to exceed $26,000. I'd like to make a motion to accept place on file and award the contract to Cole Farms in an amount not to exceed $26,000. Source of funding is Department 177, Parks and Recreation, General Operating and Trust Funds, Professional Services, $22,000, and Department 169, Wastewater, 55 other purchase services, $4,000. Very good. Um, Superintendent Caggiano, uh, would you care to join us for this uh, part of the conversation? Thank you. Anywhere you'd like, wherever you feel comfortable, but not next to June. I had some questions from the last meeting. I'm not sure if you received a, a, a copy of those concerns that were raised or if I need to repeat those for you this evening. It would probably be better if, if you could repeat them, if you don't mind. I'd be happy to. I was hoping that you'd uh, have something prepared to, to share with us or show us this evening. You do. I have a, a list of the sites. Wonderful. Uh, if you want to see them. Uh, 
I can pass them out. Would you do that yeah. for me? Thank you. That'll be helpful. So uh, for for Alderman Siegel and maybe some of the other members that weren't present at the last meeting, I did raise some questions with regard to the $26,000. Um, I, I know it's small money at the end of the day, um, but I was concerned about what are we doing, how are we maintaining, um, why are we waiting until mid-September and October to, to do this, um, and how far is it going to get us, the $26,000. So I really wanted to understand what the agreement is with coal farms, um, how many pieces of equipment are they providing, how much manpower are they providing, and how far does $26,000 get us? That's the context of. Okay. Nick Caggiano, Park and Rec Superintendent. We've been doing this program uh, annually uh, since before I, I started working for the city. Uh, the contractors have changed, but 80% of the time, uh, Coal Farms has been, has been the low bid. We have had others. And this is all based uh, on several things. Uh, in general, and I'm, I'm talking generally now, it's about four weeks worth of work for one machine to get all the work done. And then uh, that person returns in June to do high profile areas, uh, such as the Cherrywood uh, bike path, the uh, Gilson Road bike path, uh, some of the trails and mine falls where we, we have uh, a lot of activity. Some of the sites uh, are required. Uh, the levee in the Mine Falls Canal fall under the guidance of the Army Corps of Engineers, and we're required uh, to do this mowing uh, on a yearly basis in order to remain compliant with the requirements of the levee maintenance agreements. Uh, and then the rest of it is large uh, roadside mowing, and it's intersections where the complaints are starting to roll in now uh, and it's really life safety issues that we run into there we get calls from the pd from fire uh, and from residents saying how you know i can't pull out the amount of work that it in, or length that it takes varies from year to year last year i did not spend all the twenty six thousand uh, dollars we had a drought in the summer so the growth uh, wasn't as aggressive <clears throat> this year if you if you remember back to May it rained five days out of seven every week in May uh, the growth this year is tremendous there's a lot of roadside growth the calls have been coming in since uh, since the middle of July people call they, you know they, they don't want anybody to get hurt so it's a it's a program that we need to do uh, it's a program that we aren't able to do in in house. We don't have the machinery, and I would never have the manpower to be able to pull this off in the, that short amount of time. Even if I did have the machinery at this point, with the staff that we have. So, um, what does your current staff look like? Right now, I have uh, eighteen full time employee slots, and. Uh, those are those are labor people, not supervisors, administrators, and uh, that number hasn't changed since uh, well before I've stayed. I, I came on board, so 18 years. Uh, we've added fields, we've added irrigation system, we've added parks. I've done uh, man hours reports for the BPW, and it it shows very strongly that we are, in order to maintain everything. Uh, we're six full-time units short uh, in order to get that done. Uh, so we, we, we hire extra summer people when we can, but that doesn't always work uh, because most of them are, are college uh, people and they go back to school. So to try to find that, uh, we call a summer employee or a seasonal employee that'll stick around through October, November uh, is, is challenging. Um, so... This, 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 the rate he charges at $65 an hour, he's, he's 20, $25 lower than most of the bids that come in. So it's a good value. And, um, he works hard. He, he stores the machine right at, at the park and, uh, he shows up every day and off he goes. 
Uh, he pretty much knows the list by heart at this point. So the list uh, doesn't change? Uh, it'll change slightly, but most of these spots are annual spots that we have to do. We just got one called in today, Pond View Circle. Pond View Circle's off uh, Tinker Road, I believe, and mm -hmm. it's you got that bad curve there. You got it. You got to cut it back. Otherwise, God forbid somebody gets hurt there. Uh, and when I, uh, you know, I, I understand that the committee has questions, and I'm more than happy to answer them. But uh, the fear that I have is his rate's very attractive. If he goes to another community, we're we're going to be in a, a a very serious situation if we don't start this mowing in September. Uh, because we won't get to it in time. And like I said, I don't want to see anybody get hurt pulling out on a road. And, I understand, Superintendent and, Cardiano. And, and we were purposeful with our timing because this wasn't going to be accepted um, by a full board until the first meeting in September anyway. Right. So we we were pur purposeful in saying, okay, let's hold this for two weeks, bring you in for the questions so we can get answers to them, and then have it signed off. Um, so that you could get it done. But the question is, I mean, I mean, you've got a single person with a single piece of equipment, uh, is, and you, you have no backup. If, if that piece of equipment fails, or if that person gets sick or injured or hurt, what happens? It's all set. He, uh, he's, he's not an, a sole operator. He has additional pieces that he puts out on the road, so he would have to work it out and swap things back and forth all right so his his uh, his business has multiple pieces of equipment so yes. that you wouldn't be um stuck behind an eight ball no. if something were to happen to right. the in worst case scenario if i had to then i rent it a machine and i figure out a way to get it done either on on straight time or on, on overtime if i had to okay um i i have additional questions but i I'll yield the floor if anybody else has questions. Alderman Siegel. I, just a comment. There were no other bids for this. So. No, he signed a three-year. Uh, it was a three-year bid that we went out with last year. So this is his last year on that. Uh, Alderman Wilshire. I don't have any questions either, but I think this is money well spent. Yeah. And uh, kudos for finding someone who would do it for that rate. Any additional comments or questions? All right, uh, Superintendent Caggiano, um, mm -hmm. quick question going back a couple of years. And so help me um, understand. Before I do that, let me just ask you, what is the what are the role and responsibilities of these 18 full-time laborers? Um, typically, um, can you generalize their responsibilities? What, what are your They're responsible to? Uh, I don't. It, what does what it, regarding this contract? Is that what you're asking me? Uh, I'm, I'm not clear. No, in general, what are they responsible for? They're responsible f for the upkeep of They're fields. The, uh, responsible for the upkeep of the parks and the public spaces that we take care of in the city. Okay. Public that, spaces. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, not that, all parks. You know, we do. The monuments, the mm -hmm. city hall. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So there, there, you have other responsibilities beyond the parks. Correct. Okay. All right. And do those responsibilities include um, mowing, weeding, um, weed whacking, any of? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. And that goes beyond that goes beyond the parks. Correct. So you would do other. So you might mow City Hall, or you might... I mow City Hall every week. Yeah. Every week? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, we do uh, We do certain islands. Uh, the Somerset Islands need to be mowed. Uh, uh, we do uh, uh, Bergeron's Alley over here. Yeah. A little trimming, yep. the, the Water Street ramp. Uh, we do new areas now that we've acquired, uh, the River Walks. Uh, mm -hmm on the uh, west side of the Main Street Bridge that kind of goes down to Franklin Street, exactly. things like that. Okay, so you're able to maintain those areas with your current workforce of 18 full-time laborers and your current set of 
um, equipment that you have? No. 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 It, talk we, to me about that. We, we, uh, we barely get by. Uh, we, uh, a couple weeks of rain, and we're in trouble. Uh, it, we just, we've added areas of responsibility, new, new parks. We've installed irrigation system, which increases your mowing. Mm -hmm. I think we're over 40 irrigation systems now. <clears throat> We've built beautiful facilities. Legacy Playground went online last year. Yep, exactly. The Holocaust Memorial, Rotary Common, um, Park Social over on uh, Pine. And yep. So we've added all these areas, but we've never added uh, people. Uh, so, okay. and how we've done that is uh, throughout the years, I've we've invested in technology. We have some better equipment, some large mowers. We've trained them a little better, uh, but we're at that point of the bubble where uh, either we're not going to be able to take any more on, or we're, we're you know, the, we don't want to lower the standards. I think the uh, things look pretty good. I mean, if you go out on Main Street, I think Main Street looks pretty good. Agreed. Uh, most of the parks look good, and so it's hard to to lo the, lower the standards. The employees want things to look good too. So fantastic, man. We, we yeah. want things to look good as well, Superintendent Caggiano. Uh, and, and I don't think anybody's questioning that. If you had, you spoke earlier, if you had six units, full-time units, would those six units of full-time laborers, they would assist you in being able to keep up with the demand that you currently have? Or would you still experience difficulties <laughs> with five days of rain and? No, that that would allow us, if that's, that's like, uh, I guess, utopia. If, if I was to have six, uh, we'd be able to be a lot more responsive and, and, and we'd be able to get to a lot of these areas a little bit in a little more timely fashion. All right, but yeah. those six, but, you know, those six I, units would yeah. would cost the city a little bit more than twenty six thousand dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even um, at, at our lowest level, uh, I think they make uh, twenty one dollars an hour. Okay. Uh, so. All right. So this this twenty six thousand dollars for a single person and a piece of equipment. Is equates to about 400 working hours. 26,000 divided that's, by 65 yeah, that, is 400 hours. That, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So that's not all in the fall. Like I said, some of the high profile spots get done in the spring as well. So, right. so they get done twice a year. So the list that you've provided us this evening on this sheet of paper, which mm -hmm. has about 103. Somewhere 67 on the yep. north end and 38 locations on the south end. Mm -hmm. This is the fall. This is the the September mowing Correct. list? Correct. All right. And um, in the uh, springtime, this $26,000 covers the springtime mowing? Yes. Okay. Yep. And then what's the focus in springtime? Uh, the high-profile spots that are on that list, uh, to off the top of my head. So they hit some of these again? Twice. That's what I said, yep. Not all of them? No. Okay. Um, and you've got the Brushery Parkway as a new that's linear on the mile. That's yeah, on that's the on list, here. yeah. We don't mow that on Why a weekly not? basis. We don't have the equipment to, or the people to get that done okay um so i'm most familiar and i raised two specific points on broad street and they're on here mm -hmm. we talked about um broad street at the intersection of coliseum yeah we talked about broad street in front of broad street elementary school yep and I'm sure there's Upstone. Upstone is correct. That that's at the intersection with Upstone. Um, we also got Marie Ave on there that you've inquired about. Uh, correct. There was a little incident there a few years. A few back, years back, we, and you yep. maintain that very yep, well. That's on the list. Yep. So, but 
I mean, Marie Avenue, I'll take, because you just brought that up, Marie Avenue was just mowed recently. It wasn't, it, it, it's not waiting for this particular engagement. O only the, only the edge we keep clean. It, it is going to get that particular engagement. It's going to go down Marie Ave, into Lincoln, trim that whole fence, go all the way down by the river, pop out flip over the guardrail on the parking lot at Coliseum Ave yeah. and clean all that up by the river. Otherwise, uh, we get uh, um, trash and, and sometimes people might be, uh, might be making residences there. Okay. Um, so let me take you outside of uh, Lincoln Park now and let's, let's go up to um, Upstone and the Broad Street Elementary School. That one was just called in recently. Mm -hmm. And I know that the school department was there and they did a wonderful job on the grounds, but they left everything, all the weeds around the guardrail. And your crew came out. I'm assuming it was your crew. Correct me if Ac I'm wrong. Actually, we, we couldn't do it. And the, uh, I believe, uh, um, Assistant Director Patrician had the uh, street department go pull up a few people and do that job. Okay. So they did it. They did a fine job. I, why isn't there more continuity between what the school does and maintenance of their grounds? And, you know, why wouldn't they go ahead with their equipment and finish off the rest of that property? I can't answer what the school okay. does or doesn't right. do. I know. I, I mean, I've been on the board for almost 10 years now, and I remember where we used to have public works be responsible for this path of mowing and school would be coming down the other side. Mm. And <laughs> It's not like that very much. I mean, the, you look right now, uh, we're, we're all working together. We have uh, people from the street department, people from my department, people from the school department are over at Charlotte Ave right now okay. doing renovations over there. So we work together. We Wonderful. share equipment. Good. Uh, it's, there's so, no. So you said you don't have the equipment to do this. What kind of equipment is it? It's a large, they call it a frail mower uh, on an arm that goes on a very large tractor that reaches over. It's probably an eighty to $100,000 piece of equipment that gives you about 15 to 16 feet of reach off okay. the tractor. All right, so it's a it's an extendable arm that goes yep. over guardrails and such, and mm -hmm. it's available. Okay, um, does is does that piece of equipment exist in the city anywhere at all? No, no. Okay, so it's nothing that you can share with another department. All right, no. But some, like I said, some of this work gets done prior to bringing this. Uh, minimum. Min very minimum. Okay. So if we get a call, if we get a call from police and fire and they say, Nick, you got to get to this, then that means I got to go there and look at it and I got to pull somebody off something else. If it's, if it's a life safety issue, okay. we got to take care of it right away. All right. Um, I have other questions, but, um, I think you've done a fine job in answering those uh, that I've asked. Um, you can email me any yeah, I know, any I additional know. And things. I can, and, I, I can call yeah. you as well, and I know that you'll you'll be there to answer them. It wasn't my intention to put you on the spot this evening. I was just That's fine. I was concerned about, you know, um, I think some of this work gets done, or I don't know. I don't understand why it has to wait until September to get done. And the other example that I had was on Broad Street and Coliseum. It's just completely overgrown. And if if we would make an effort to have regular maintenance worth instead of waiting until these weeds are small trees and are eight feet tall, it seems to me like we might not have to do this annual program or as it might not yeah. be as extensive and as it is. It not to be uh, not to be funny, but uh, you have to wait until the growth is there before you can cut it back. So you can't run that machine on 
in May, June, or, or even but, July. But, uh, but Superintendent Cargiano, if yeah. it's if it's not eight feet tall, you don't need that machine. You do because it's not turf grass; it's brambles, it's pucker brush, it's, it's but if raspberries. You wait, it's, if you if you it's wait until it, if, if if you wait until I, I'm, it weeds I'm, an inch, right? Yep. You probably need that piece of equipment. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Uh, I, I'm not here to argue about the uh, merits of when to do it. I, I think it's a good program. I think it's uh, very cost effective. And uh, sure, if we had uh, another uh, another department that could go out and mow all these ancillary spots, it, we'd never need this. But we don't have that, unfortunately. Okay. So I will ask the question yeah. now because. Um, a couple years ago when we were working on sidewalks, who was responsible for uh, providing man hours and labor hours for, for the sidewalks with brick and concrete? And who provided that expertise and, and service? The, the street department street, does that work. The street I, department I did that work. Nobody yes. from Parks and Rec provided any support. On um, working on sidewalks? Yeah. No. Okay. All right. Um, so we were told at that point in time that. Um, even with those employees contributing labor hours toward this, the sidewalks, that it would not have repercussions on their day-to-day -day activities or responsibilities, that they were going to be able to maintain and keep up with their regular responsibilities. Are you familiar with that? I, a little bit, but okay. I think that's a question that should be geared toward the director, not... Very good. Yeah. So I will gear that toward the director. I appreciate your time this evening, Mr. Okay. Uh, Caggiano. All right, thank you. Any additional questions or comments? Um, Alderman Clemens. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Caggiano, thank you very much for your service to the city and thank you very much for your expertise. I appreciate it. Thanks. Any additional questions? Uh, Alderman Karen. Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, I know that there's a lot of pieces to this, you know, to this pro process, but we do need that outside source. I, I don't think the city is going to invest in a hundred and $150,000 machine that's only needed for a certain amount of time. And it's not like we're mowing the regular grass in a playground or a park or something like that. So I think the, the money that it costs us to do this uh, twice a year, I think is important. And it keeps the staff to do the daily operations that have to take place with impacts and rec and, and um, Mr. Caggiano is right. Uh, we have always been shot staffed. We get more and more things to do because we add facilities, open spaces, as you can see with the rail trails and things like that. So I think this is a, a good thing. And I think he gave a, a great explanation and, and a list of those areas that we needed to, to have an idea. So um, I'm gonna vote for this. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional? Alderman Wiltshire. Just a, a last comment. I, I know we always ask our departments to do more with less, but we ask you to do more and give you more. <laughs> so thank you for what you do. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Alderman Siegel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd note that even if we own the piece of equipment, given the number of hours it takes to do this, it's still cheaper to hire this outside source to get this work done. So. I mean, there, I think this is a real value for us. And it's a specialized piece of equipment. The person knows the job. I think it makes sense to do this. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? Um, Super DiCaggiano, do we know how many linear miles this represents? No. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Um, so the motion by Alderman Siegel is to accept, place on file, and award the contract to Coal Farms in an amount not to exceed $26,000. Source of funding is Department 177, Parks and Rec, General Operating and Trust Funds, Professional Services, $22,000, and Department 169, Wastewater, 55, other purchases, or other purchase services, $4,000. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion carries. Record of expenditures. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that the Finance Committee has complied with the City Charter and ordinances pertaining to the record of expenditures for the period July 28, 2017 to August 10, 2017. You've heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. 
All right, everybody has signed it, so we should be good there. Um, public comment. Seeing none, general discussion. No need to go into non-public this evening. Is there a motion? Um, yeah, Mr. Kuka. Osborne here this evening yeah. to talk about uh, DPW projects. Oh, thank you. It's not on the agenda. It is not on the agenda. Um, my apologies, Ms. Osborne, would you like to join us? We can call this general discussion. Good evening. Are we um, discussing the turbine? Well, we, we, we can probably discuss anything we want to. Um, <laughs> but go ahead, uh, state your name um, for the record, and then we'll start talking about um, the wastewater treatment facility. And I'm Noelle Osborne, Plant Operations Supervisor at Wastewater. Very good. Um, so we had, what, what was your expectation this evening with regard to um, coming? Um, my expectation was to come and bring to you an update on the major projects that are going on at Wastewater and maybe a slight forecasting on the FY18 expenditures. Wonderful. Any additional request of Ms. Osborne this evening? Is that good for everybody's as far as setting expectations? Mm -hmm. All right, wonderful. Ms. Osborne, the floor is yours. All right. Um, we have a vast number of major projects to run through. A lot of them have already come before this board and some are going to be new but have been um, ferreted out in the budget process. Uh, the first one is the Headworks project which is well under construction. Uh, the update on that, we have uh, two channels where we're getting new bar screens and wash presses. One is complete and in use and the other is expected to begin on August 21st. We're going to begin the demolition on that. Um, the next project is the HVAC upgrade, another one that's well underway in construction. We have uh, most of the demolition has occurred, most of the ductwork has been installed. Uh, currently we're insulating and conduits being installed and we're awaiting the delivery of the SAU units for the rooftop installation. Uh, yard hydrant project. We're awaiting construction startup that's been awarded. Uh, we have a pre-construction meeting next week, so that's going to be starting um, with uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of disarray at the plant for a couple of months. Um, the next one to talk about is digester clean out. That's where we're cleaning out that primary digester. Um, this is in the bidding phase right now. It's out to bid currently. Um, this is, we're looking at uh, also dewatering and cleaning um, the roof tanks, the rooftop storage tanks for the sledge. Um, so that's going to be a little bit of, all, of course, major projects are not without upheaval, right? So there's, there's a little bit of disarray going on at the, the treatment plant. Um, SCADA update, uh, upgrade, that's our computer system that controls all of the equipment. Uh, that is going out to bid in September, hopefully. Uh, the design is complete. We're just waiting on the yay okay from the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. Pump station came before you guys, uh, I believe about a month ago. That's up for final design now. Um, we're waiting for, again, New Hampshire DES to give us the signed contract so we can get that kicked off. Primary tank upgrades is in preliminary design phase. Um, the consultants are starting the evaluation for this design and we're taking some trips to see the equipment at other treatment facilities and, and talking to some operators to see how it works in the real world. Water. What, what was the name of that, the company that, that we have doing that for us? For the primary upgrades yes. is the uh, Wright Pierce. Um, the water booster station is in preliminary design phase. Uh, we had an evaluation report done by Woodard and Karen. It's been approved, and now we're moving forward on the design of that. Um, and then the final major project is the energy recovery generator, which we uh, put out for the RFQ process, and we're working on the uh, awarding phase of that. So we're working on um, negotiating the price right now. Those are the major projects. I'm going to stop right there in case anybody has any questions on any of those. Is Woodward and Kern, um, are they only involved in the, the project management or are they in, involved in any other aspect? They weren't going to submit themselves for the bid, is that correct? They are only doing design, they're not doing any construction. All right. 
Um, so then the next part of what I had prepared for you is uh, I looked ahead on our WERF list, our Wastewater Equipment Repair Fund list, um, for all of the FY18 current items. Um, so I'm going to run through those quickly. I don't have prices on any of this because we haven't done that phase yet. Um, but we have the primary thickener drain valves times two. We have two of those. The primary digester sump pumps times two. Two cranes are scheduled for replacement on site. Uh, two grit roll-off containers, three heating cooling pumps, some instrumentation in wet weather, pressure monitoring assemblies in the wet weather facility, turbidimeters in the wet weather times two, pH meters again times two. We have the Kubota tractor that's scheduled for replacement, street sweeper, uh, two trucks and a car, a portable generator, and potentially the Vactor truck. This is a very, very extensive list, whether or not it all makes it before the board this fiscal year um, remains to be seen. And uh, of course, note that things are fluid and changing in, in wastewater. What's not on the list, what I can't forecast, are things that break. Um, the wastewater treatment facility, as you know, runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We have a design capacity of 16 million gallons per day, a peak flow capacity of 110 million gallons per day. We have over 400 miles of collection system and 14 pumping stations. All of those things have moving parts, things that have to be replaced, things that are very, very expensive. Um, so when they are broken, we act on them quickly and we get them before the Board of Public Works and we get them before you, you folks. Um, but there is no way to predict those. All we can do is do our preventative maintenance and, and attempt to make sure everything continues to work. Questions or comments? Kobe. Yeah, thank you. You did touch lightly uh, but on it, but when I came on the board, I was amazed at how much money we are spending to fix a lot of stuff at the mm -hmm. waste treatment plant, and I'm glad to be ahead of it. We all benefit from it, of course. But the thing is, are you looking at, like, a better preventive maintenance program that you touch lightly on it, but to make sure, like, I'm sure some of these pumps have a life expectancy. They need to be torn down, need to be rebuilt at a certain point. Are we going to get better so we can get better life expectancy out of some of our equipment now that we're almost pretty, sound like in good shape there right now. So I would like to stay there is my point. Yeah, uh, we are actually in very good shape in comparison to we, where we were. I'm going to just go back to September of 2014 when a lot of things came to head. Um, just to touch lightly on that and move forward. Uh, the city has implemented uh, the cartograph system, and that has actually been very, very good for asset tra uh, tracking, um, checking and making sure that we're doing oil changes on time a lot. It, it's just like a car. You have to do oil changes at hour intervals. Um, so we are looking at that. We're looking at, um, you know, internally the, how we can uh, make sure, you know, if there's a leak or you're losing oil out of something. Um, we have our operators checking sight glass for the oil in, inside of things and making sure, you know, they red flag things and let Foreman know immediately. So we are getting a lot better on preventative maintenance it's it's come leaps and bounds good yep any additional con um, conversation the vehicles that you mentioned when you were going down that list mm -hmm. um, how many of those are on um, surf it, wastewater does not actually participate in surf we have our own separate list which is the wharf the wastewater equipment replacement fund so all of them are on the wharf list none are on the surf list but they're all on the, the wharf, as you mentioned. Yes. All scheduled all... for replacement in this fiscal year. Thank you. Any additional comments? Thank you, Ms. Osborne. Of course. All right. Um, so we'll consider that general discussion. We'll move on to um, a motion. Algon Wilshire. Uh, can I just say one oh, thing? First? By all means. I want to wish my my uh, my colleague. Fern, well, and I move to adjourn. <laughs> the motion by Alderman Wilshire is to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. We are adjourned at 7.40 p.m.